Our agenda for today, I wish to start off with giving some background validation information for people not uh, experienced with validation. And then we'll cover a few tools and techniques uh, regarding validation. Then we will follow up with interface, the various interface types that I have put down and the risks that are involved with those types of interfaces. And then we will end up with our question and answer period. So to start off with, uh, when we talk about the interfaces, we're going to look at the three basic classifications that I have listed here. Uh, we're going to look at the instrument level, that is simple things like balances and pH meters, as well as more sophisticated instruments like GCs and ICPs, IRs, and other types of instrumentation. In addition, we'll look at interfaces between LIMS and various types of software, such as your chromatographic data systems, your corrective and preventive action systems, uh, things like SAP, MFG Pro, your, your, very, uh, your various ERP systems. You can also lump in there your human resource and other things like ELN, SDMS, and other types of software packages. And lastly, we'll look at uh, interfacing other types of hardware, such as your PDAs and tablets, as well as online analyzers and, and special remote devices. I want to start off with by uh, putting in a definition of what is validation. And this definition comes from FDA guidelines and the purpose of a validation process is to provide that high degree of assurance that your computer system or other process will consistently produce a product which meets predetermined specifications and quality attributes. Basically what this means is that you're able to reproduce the input and output that you get. Every step in that process and the activities within those steps do require that you form some documented evidence that you have completed these steps. Without that documentation, uh, the FDA and other regulated uh, agencies do not consider the system to be validated. The steps in your process and any associated activities you perform can and are run in parallel with the system development life cycle. And in most cases, they will reference the various development documentation as you produce it. So there are ties between the validation steps that you run, the activities that you run, and the documentation that you produce beforehand. The other part that I want to talk about a little bit is what's called risk-based validation. Validation has changed over the years and the current uh, GAMP guide, that is the Good Automated Manufacturing Processes Guide, now recommends risk-based assessments as a way to approach your validations. In this type of methodology, the task you have is to identify the risks that are involved in your system and to classify them according to their importance. In the simplest format, you would consider a risk to be low, medium, or high, depending on how that particular item impacts your product. So in your risk assessment, you look at your, whether it be patient safety, product quality, or product attributes, or other items, and look at how things that impact that product attribute and then you classify them as low, medium, or high risk. Now, regarding the testing that you run in this type of process, it really depends on the culture of the organization that you are in. High risk functions, those things that carry a high risk should be very thoroughly tested. Things that carry low risk, though, can be either cursory tested or perhaps even ignored, depending on the exact nature of the item. 